Hello folks, this is tutorial 6 in a playlist that I will bring up the slide in a minute and uh, it's called Tips for uh, uh, Finite Element Analysis in 3D Experience. Uh, tutorials 1 through 5 and this tutorial 6, they all deal with the same problem. The difference is that here I will introduce two structural analysis cases within the same run and we take it from this point on. So to tutorials one through five is solving the same problem, but in the same structural analysis case one, but here we're gonna be doing two. <coughs> okay, so the first let me introduce you to the problem. We have an axially loaded member, uh, which is uh, being uh, pulled from both sides. Uh, except that on the left side, instead of uh, uh, actually making it the clamp, what I've done is I've put a, a, a way that this does, does not cause a, a local stress concentration here. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. And then we, we're pulling it from the other side. <clears throat> to make sure that there is just elongates without any stress concentration at the end, at one end, uh, I will put that entire uh, uh, face on a surface slider or a slider and this point is uh, uh, restricted from moving in all three directions and this point will uh, be stopping this thing from tipping over in other words no displacement in the z direction <coughs> and of course the other side is a, it could be a pressure or it could be a you know translation etc now it is a 10 by 1 by 1 cross section a bar made out of steel. And uh, this number, uh, P equal to 3000 psi and delta equal to 0 0.001, these are related in a sense that if I apply 3000 psi at this face, because the area is 1, 3000 pound at this face, it stretches by the amount 0 0.001 inches. <clears throat> I'll be using this for assessing my uh, uh, correctness of the results. But where does this thing come from? So essentially, we have a fancy spring. Uh, if you apply a force on it, it's going to stretch to the stiffness. And the stiffness of uh, this bar from elementary strength of material is AE over L. So you just plug this thing in, uh, simplify it. And then we note that the force at this end is pressure times area. <coughs> Notice that the area cancels out. And you have PL over E. <coughs> so if you take P equal to 3000, L equal to 10, and E is given from here, you plug it in, you get 0 0.001 inches. So <coughs> in order to pull this thing by 0 0.001 inch, you need 3000 pound or 3000 PSI. Uh, etc. Now, this is the playlist that this uh, video is going to go into. Already, there are tutorials one through five dealing with the same problem, but with a single structure analysis case. So now we're going to do two. What do I mean by single structure analysis case? <clears throat> when you create a structure analysis uh, scenario or uh, uh, a, scen a scen scenario automatically one structural analysis case is created and it's called case one now if you want to do this and keep it here no problem maybe you want to do the problem <coughs> with a completely new boundary condition and loads and, uh, and things like that that being the case you can always insert a uh, Structure analysis case, there will be structure analysis case two, structure analysis case three, etc. <clears throat> so, within uh, structure analysis, you have your boundary condition load, you have uh, steps, etc., procedure steps. And uh, but here, I'm going to do this thing in two steps, you'll see why. <clears throat> so, in case one, I'm going to pull the bar, okay, either by a force or by a translation. And structural analysis case two, I will release it. When I say release it, is uh, <clears throat> essentially to go back to 
uh, the zero state state of stress. I mean, you you can you can incorrectly uh, say that you're compressing the bar. You're really not compressing the bar. You're taking the the bar all the way to the right hand side, and essentially removing that load from the right hand side, so that it's released and it goes back to where it started. So this is a misnomer. Really, I should not be calling compressor <coughs> compressing it. But anyway, so uh, we're going to do it like this. <clears throat> so this, uh, if you look, uh, when you're in structural scenario creation, uh, there is a setup tab, and in the setup tab, uh, there is something called create analysis case right there. Now the other option is duplicate a uh, duplicate a case, but uh, we're going to create a new one. Okay, so like that. Now. In this case two, structural analysis case two that we're going to create, we use initial conditions and initial condition on stress is going to be taking the stress from the previous case, namely case one, and then proceed. Okay. <clears throat> so when you try to do initial uh, initial stress uh, in case two, it says, well, you want to specify the initial stress. Or do you want to do you want it to come from another step? And this is what you want to do. We want to do it from another step. And in order to do that, you must have already created a case. And then you can take it from that case, namely case one. <clears throat> so you can see that uh, you must have created some, you must have had some case one, and from it you can select your uh, your step, which is in this case going to be step one. So what happens? A second structure analysis case is created, case two, and here you have the initial stress, which is just we just did. And then you can apply boundary condition, you can apply a load. Obviously, you have to set, specify the, the procedure that we're going to do that. Now, when you try to run this thing, it's going to say, hey, you've got two cases. Would you like to uh, do both of them? Yes. <clears throat> you want to override something that you already had? Yes, etc. Now, <clears throat> In this tutorial, I'll show you uh, some cases that work and they should work intuitively. For example, that business of compressing the bar, which is not, which is really a misnomer. We're going to try to compress it and see what the effect is going to be. It's not going to give you the right result. See that? But we'll see. <clears throat> so this one will work. For example, we, when you say uh, we, we push it back to 0, 0.00, this will work. But if you say uh, compressive pressure of 3,000 uh, psi, well, that's not going to work. It's going to give you, it's going to run, but it's not going to give you the thing that you want. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, talk about a few strategies that uh, we can use in order to solve this problem. And the first one is you, in in case one, you pull the bar. Uh, by applying a pressure of 3,000 psi uh, so that it elongates, okay? Now, use this result, the result of case one, as the initial stress for case two, okay? And then just do nothing else, just to run it. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is at the end of case two, the step at the end of case two, do we get a zero stress? And do we have a basically shrinkage of 0 0.001 inch, negative 0 0.001? And we will. You'll see that. If we just use initial stress and did nothing else, run it, we get to exactly what we want. And of course, this works. The other option is to say, OK, doing nothing means essentially applying zero pressure to the right side. That's really the same thing. The only thing is that you, if you did the same thing except that you applied z pressure equal to zero, z uh, zero, it will come back and say, hey, you can't have p equal to zero. Okay, if you don't want it, just don't put it in there. But don't put p equal to zero. So if you put a tiny number there, and uh, <clears throat> you're going to get exactly the same thing, so this is okay. And the only reason I use this number, this is just a random number, we cannot say pressure equal to zero. That's as simple as that. 
<clears throat> now, intuitively, you might say, isn't that the same as compressing that bar? Well, let's try. If you compress that bar, you apply a pressure of 3,000 PSI to that end during the release, but <clears throat> that's not really releasing it. <clears throat> and that's why the pressure at the end of uh, case two is going to be negative 3,000 PSI and negative 0 0.002. So you're doing something, but it is not the correct way of handling the problem. Now, there are these other cases that you can do it yourself. And then if you go to the second situation, uh, you can uh, basically create that tension in the bar in case one by translating. So again, some of these, uh, which look intuitively reasonable, will not work, okay? But anyway, what I do for you is just <coughs> these two cases. <coughs> okay, let's go ahead and do that. <coughs> so uh, on the vertical plane, I will sketch a, a square. Incidentally, if you want this to be equal to that, so you select that, you control select this edge, and then you equate them, and now you can make a dimension, for example, of uh, uh, one, <coughs> one inch. Because in the other videos, I may have done dimensioning twice, <coughs> but that's, you can do it this way. Exit, and then we pad it by 10 inches. Uh, pad, <coughs> let me see, pad this, 10 inches, <coughs> good, let's apply material to it, so under tools, uh, I create a material, I've got tutorial 6, two six. and today is October, 13, 2024. <coughs> Let's uh, make it <coughs> just properties of steel. <coughs> Get rid of this. We put in our number in there. Structural, abacus, multi physics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic, uh, 30,000 KSI. And Poisson ratio 0.3. <coughs> All right. And let's do the rest of the problem. <coughs> so we're going to go to uh, uh, structural model creation. Fine. Uh, MTFEM. I'm going to do a simple sweep mesh. I use the same uh, mesh that I used uh, in tutorials one through five. So on the mesh, uh, sweep mesh, there, uh, 0.25 each edge, 20, 20 layers. So looks like that. <coughs> and then we have to do the properties, uh, solid section. Select the part from here so material is correctly picked. And we're good. Now we're going to go to structural scenario creation. And use our FEM model. Notice that as soon as you do that, a case one is created right here. See that? In the tree at the very bottom, structural analysis case one. So first of all, we're going to do a, a static step. <coughs> I use the same numbers that uh, was used in tutorials one through five for uh, initial uh, initial time increment and the maximum time increment. Okay. Uh, now, <coughs> for uh, uh, the the boundary conditions, uh, let's uh, do the fixed displacement first. So. 
we agreed that to prevent making uh, artificial uh, <clears throat> stress concentration, this corner point is X, Y, Z. Another one, this other corner point, uh, no displacement in direction Z. And uh, this face uh, cannot move in the direction uh, uh, direction Y, but the alternative to say, okay, surface slider. <clears throat> or slider, not surface slider. Slider. Good. I'll take care of it. Now, remember, in step one, we are applying a pressure of negative 3,000 PSI. And negative because we want to elongate it. We want to stretch it. <clears throat> A positive value of pressure is, by convention, pushing in. But we don't want to do that. We want to stretch it. So we go to load. Pressure on that face. <clears throat> negative 3,000. What's going to happen is that this is going to stretch by 0 0.001 inch. Now, <clears throat> we have we have choices. We can apply, run it now. We can do that. Let's check it out. So we go to simulate. I could have done the case two the, uh, and then run it at the same time, but uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll check it out. <clears throat> Okay, so this is going to give you a stretching of 0 0.001 inch, <coughs> and the stress in the entire structure is going to be uh, at every point. Axial stress is going to be uh, uh, point uh, uh, 3,000 psi. <coughs> We're going to check that. It's going to finish in a minute. It's a very simple problem. <coughs> yeah, extracting the results. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so let me close this thing. First of all, this is the end of end of uh, case one. Let's see, case one, there's only one step in it, and uh, it's the end, and it's 3,000 von Mises stress. But you know what, let me actually plot the axial stress. So I double click, the left double click on this, and instead of uh, quantity, I use uh, uh, tensor component to two. So number is not going to change, but this is not the one Mises stress that I'm plotting, but it's the sigma to two or uh, axial stress. Good. <clears throat> and if you go to uh, plot the displacement, the maximum displacement should be uh, uh, 0 0.001 at the tip. Good, good. Now, we need a case two. So I go to setup, and under the setup, Oh, sorry, I have, uh, this is the result. First, I have to go uh, first. Let, let me go back here. Let me go to the scenario right there. First, I have to go back to scenario, <coughs> which is double clicking on uh, any one of these that I've done to. And then on this setup, and here's create an analysis case. Create analysis case. And that's going to be case two, right? And the finite element, you're going to select it. You're going to use the same mesh. Now, when you go to procedure, we're going to do another uh, static step. Same initial increment, 0.1, and same maximum time increment, 0.1. This is a very robust problem. These things are not very relevant, but that's OK. <clears throat> so notice that we had case one here with all the information that we had already in that, namely pressure right there, etc. But I'm going to collapse this thing. Okay, good. <clears throat> now, uh, notice that if I had said use a duplicate, even the restraints and things would have been created and I could have modified it. But I didn't do that, so uh, that's fine. 
and then I'm going to say uh, initial condition there, initial condition, initial condition tab. So let me remind you where we are. The initial condition tab right there. Initial stress. And I want the, this thing from selected from a step. And there is only one case that I have, and there's only one step in it. So automatically it went to the end of case one and step one, end of step one, essentially, okay? And I say, okay, so notice that here in static case two, uh, where is that? Uh, right here, initial, uh, initial, uh, initial stress has been recovered from the previous case. Good. Now we're gonna go to uh, boundary conditions. Again, slider. If I had used duplicate, then I would have saved time here, but that's okay. Uh, and then the uh, uh, fixed displacement, this one, X, Y, Z. And another one on this corner, Z. Very good. <coughs> and remember, nothing else apply initial stress do nothing else just run it okay so let's go ahead and do that simulate let's first check it i notice that here it says uh, can only structure analysis case two can only be run once uh, once structure analysis case one has been completed now uh, we have already done that Okay, we have already done that, so I can even probably uncheck this thing and say okay, but they can be run together. That that's fine. <clears throat> Good. Run it again, and it's going to tell you the same thing. That basically, uh, would you like to run structure analysis case one because it has already been written, uh, it has already been uh, uh, run. So do you want to do it again? Yeah, I'll do it again. I mean, if these things take time, you might as well, for example, not run something that has already been run before. So now we're going to look at the end of case two, the last increment of the step in case two, and I better get zero stress and negative 0.001 uh, <coughs> shrinkage, basically. In other words, I expect to see this. <clears throat> Almost done. Okay, good, good, close it. <clears throat> so look, we are in, well, first of all, if you go to uh, j case one and you look at the first, uh, for example, uh, 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 step, you get zero, zero stress. And then at the very, there, zero stress. And then at the very end of the case one, you get 3000. And this is what's gonna go into case two. <coughs> So you go into a structure analysis case two, and you look at the very top, you see your what is inherited from uh, the previous run, 3000, okay? And then when you look at the last one, zero stress. So actually, let me do the component. Uh, I guess I have to do that again, double click on this thing. Uh, component two, two. Yep. There, zero stress. What about displacement? This must have shrunk by 0 0.001. So if you go to displacement, <coughs> but this is the magnitude. So if you double click, say I want the component uh, in the direction two, component vector component, you're gonna get a negative number, negative 0 0.001. So this thing has shrunk back to negative 0 0.001. Okay, so what I've done here <coughs> is this uh, strategy one. 
strategy two, I'm going to apply a zero pressure here. So I go make sure that <clears throat> I go to the analysis scenario. I make sure that I'm in case two and go to the, uh, <clears throat> where is that? Go to uh, uh, the load, apply pressure at this end zero pressure but when you say zero it's going to come back and say oh, i can't do that essentially <clears throat> let's see you see this basically it says if it's zero why are you putting it there so what i'm going to do double click on this thing and put a tiny number 0. 0.000001 I mean, this is a overkill but that's okay now uh, there's no exclamation here <clears throat> and we're going to run it I better get the same thing. <clears throat> and I will. Uh, the final thing while, while this is running, the final thing is that if I come to, come to, come and change that pressure to 3000 PSI, in other words, pretend that I'm actually trying to compress this thing, although it sounds right, uh, you, you're not going to get the right answer. Obviously, you're compressing it. You're not releasing it. That's a different story. And the same thing with these other cases. We should get zero axial stress and uh, compression value of negative 0 0.001 compressive displacement or yeah shrinkage of 0 0.001 negative 0 0.001 <clears throat> Okay, so this is static case two. Uh, this one is, uh, let's look at the uh, axial stress. Zero, almost zero axial stress. And uh, for displacement, uh, component of displacement, negative 0 0.001 at least. Yeah, that takes care of this tutorial. So essentially, the, this, uh, the, the, the main reason behind this tutorial was to show you <coughs> what is the significance of these different structure uh, uh, different uh, cases in other words different uh, uh, structure analysis cases uh, it's, it's very useful it's very useful but i didn't in the context of this example that you see here good luck